What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. Uh, this is Huey here and I trade stocks and options every single day, even on weekends. The purpose of today's video is to discuss candlesticks, the importance of candlesticks, the vibes and the language that they speak, right? Um, and how you can use them to better understand how to read charts, etc, etc. Right? So check it out. And if you like the content, then go ahead and hit the like button on this video. And if you want more, then go ahead and subscribe. And I'll see you in the comments. I'll talk to you soon. Peace. The first section that I want to discuss is candles versus lines, right? So right now you have uh, the line graph on your chart uh, and on your screen rather. And so now this this kind of line graph depicts where the price went um, as time passed. So on the X axis, you have time down here and on the Y axis, you have price. And as you can see right now, the price, you know, as time goes on, the price kind of picks up and goes down. Uh, and that's what price does. Price goes up, goes up and down. Um, so, so with the line graph, you can see that it's kind of pointing up. You can see where where the lows kind of were, and where the highs kind of were, and that's it, right? There's not much more information than that. The benefit of having uh, candlesticks is that you get a lot more information in the uh, in what you're seeing, right? There's a lot more information in the candlesticks in regards to price versus time. So that's why we use candlesticks because we can tell where the buyers are. We can tell where the sellers are. We can tell how strong a trend is or how weak it is. We can tell uh, based on these trends and based on the candlesticks, we can try to uh, anticipate and predict uh, stock market movements. So uh, so that's the benefit of using candlesticks versus a line chart. Now, the the uh, this is fundamental and, and I want everybody to understand this. This is, uh, and it's super simple. It's the, it's the earliest pretty much fundamental candlesticks here and that's um the the uh what you're seeing on the candlestick it's the open the high the low and the close that's what these stand for open high low and close now uh, i'm gonna go over to this screen here and before i get into the open high low and close you see that there's some colors on on this chart green and red and those are t typically the default colors here in the united states and in, uh, in japan it's opposite but anyway green and red so green tells us that price went up and red tells us that price went down, right? Every single candlestick has uh, different parts of it and, and they give us different information. So um, the parts that you see here known as the body is, is basically where uh, the majority of the price um, of, of the stock's price action lives, right? Uh, so same thing. These two have uh, the same size body. This green candle shows that the price went up and this red candle shows that the price went down. Uh, they also have these, these two lines on, the, on either side of the body called wicks. The ones on top are called upper wicks or upper shadows and the ones on the bottom are called lower wicks or lower shadows. So I'll explain to you what these are but it'll be easier for you to do it with a live chart. But very quickly, just to finish, kind of wrap this concept up of open, high, low and close. On a green candlestick, you'll get the price that opens up at this level, whatever this level is on the price, uh, on the price, uh, the y-axis, which is the price. So as you see, price moves up and down on this axis. So we have the price that opened here at the bottom of this line right here. And then as the chart, as the, the price moves up, this green candle starts to form, letting us know that the price is moving up, right? Once this price kind of, if, if price came down below where it opened, then it would change from green over to red and it would be a red candlestick, right? Now, these shadows or wicks show where price has attempted to reach, but for example, let's say this, this one open here at this bottom of this line, and it came down, forming a red candle as it's working its way down, and then buyers came in and stepped in and bought the price, you know, they bought the stock and they brought the price up and bringing the stock, you know, buying it. And so, as they buy it, the, the body contracts, goes back to where this line was, and you'll see the kind of a shadow. That's why we call them shadows. You see kind of a shadow of where the price was and where it traveled to before it continued to move upward, right? So now we have price opens here, comes down, and buyers bought it up. That's a lot of information on just this bottom part of this candlestick, right? Now, as you can see, it moves all the way up and price has gone up and it closes up here where this kind of uh, this other end of the line is. But based on this wick, we can see that it, the price has traveled as far up as the top of this wick. And then sellers came and sold it off and it pushed the price down to this level where it closed. Now, 
the exact opposite is true for the red candle uh, and really the only difference is that the price opened up here and closed down below it below the open whereas on green candles the price opens here and closes above the open right they have the same pretty much the same size body uh, they've traveled and made the same highs and the same lows right so we have the open the highs the lows down here and the close you know whether whether green candle up above the open or red candle close below the open i know that that was a lot so let's just look at it in real time um this is s p futures currently trading right now on a one minute time frame so that candle that just opened it opened up down here at uh it opened up here at 42 51 50 and you saw as it attempted to kind of make these you see how it's moving up and it's forming a green candle it did try to form a red candle and you can see by the shadow that it kind of made a low over here and it kind of tested this area but buyers stepped in and are pushing the price up and you see it's making newer it's, it's making higher highs as buyers are pushing it up you see sellers are starting to step in here at this level um for this one candlestick this seems like it was a good level for buyers because both of these have buying a little bit of buying pressure here and if you look over to the left you can see that there's a little bit of buying pressure just in this area period so a lot of buyers like it at this level now will they be able to hold the stock at this level let's see as you can see there was a large massive massive shadow that formed here on the top which shows that there was a lot of sellers in control at that time so this next one kind of opened up here tested this high and came back to to kind of retest the open of the candle now it's opening and going higher right as you can see since it's currently higher than the open it's a green candle if this candle were to, the price were to go down below where it opened, then it would form kind of this red candle where it kind of what it was doing then. Um, with futures, it's a little interesting because uh, futures are low volume. And so you get a lot, a lot, a lot of dojis, uh, which is what this is right now. It's a doji or, or what this candlestick right here is. This is a doji. What a doji is, is uh, a point where kind of price opened, came all the way to a high, all the way to a low and close right exactly where it opened which uh shows indecision or balance and typically uh that's that's really important because uh what you'll get is for example we had one two three four five straight red candles going in a downtrend forming lower lows and lower highs and and then at, on this candle we had to pause and just think about it conceptually you have buyers and sellers and at this point buyers the, the, the sellers were like, you know what, let's take a break from selling and, you know, maybe give the buyers some control. Uh, so that's 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 kind of what it is. And then the buyers kind of stepped in. There was still more sell pressure, as you can tell, because this wick here on the top where the sellers are was stronger than this wick here where the buyers are. And even by the next candle where it kind of made a red candle. But what makes Doji so important and so powerful is that when they appear at the ends of these trends, sometimes you can get reversals or pullbacks and so that's exactly what happened here kind of there was an indecision and not immediately after but shortly after there was a there was a little bit of a, of a change in trend right it went from down to up um, so as you can see uh, this candle opened up here at 42.53 and uh, it made a low of what's this low it made a low of 42.52 and 50 cents and it kind of worked its way up this candle opened up down here no sellers have brought it down below the open only sellers exist up here right now they're kind of you know they're, they're trying to you can tell they're fighting and it looks like they want to bring it back down to the open just as i was mentioning that so let's see if they can do it and let's see if they can make this a red candle or, or give us a lower shadow just like the other three previous candles before it um so yeah we got a doji and then we actually got a little bit of sell pressure where it, where it turned into a red candlestick that kind of looked like this just for an instant but then buyers immediately stepped in and took all the sellers out and i mean this thing it just it just moved so i like looking at futures it's low volume so it moves very very quickly with a lot of volatility and obviously you can you can look at futures overnight right at night and and it makes very clean moves very kind of mechanical moves uh so so it's a good way to study candlesticks so that's open high low close uh to wrap it up um all these candles that are red closed lower than they opened which makes them red and all of these candles that are green closed higher than they opened which makes them green price goes up when it's green and price goes down when it's red the next thing that i want to discuss is well we talked about wicks and bodies a little bit um so let's talk about wicks and bodies a little bit more 
So Wix and Bodies uh, show you where the majority of the price kind of lives. Uh, I think Wix are a little bit, so they're both very important. Let's look at kind of this move here, right? We had a, a big green candle, this first green candle that you see, and then we had another with a, a large body. Let me pull it back. A big green candle with a large body, and then another big green candle with no sellers at all, and they didn't try to even bring it down from the open. It just, there were straight buyers in this candle. Right? There was no sellers in this candle because it has no upper shadows and they didn't try to bring it below the open. Right, This candle never went red. It was always green. And then you had this candle where you know uh, it sold off. It came all the way down to down here, but buyers stepped in and brought, brought the closing price all the way up here. Now, this is red because it closed lower than it opened. Right, That's the reason why it's red. But we're still higher than all of these opens and closes. Right, So we're still in that uptrend. And then this candle came in and... and you know, as soon as it opened, it opened a little higher than the close, right? So this one closed here, this one opened here, and then it just shot up immediately. It shot all the way up to here, and this is when buyers kind of stepped in and pushed the price back down. And then they tried it again where the price opened up here, and uh, so it opened up, it tested this level again, this previous level, it came up, and it was a green candle for a little bit. It was a little bit of a green candle, maybe the size of this one, this one here, this first one, and then buyers uh, sellers came in and brought, brought the price all the way down and they set this downtrend into motion now the the size of the bodies show conviction this body with no candle with no wicks either on the top or bottom show me that there was only buyers here because nobody tried to bring the price down below the open opening price and they only bought it up and everybody was in agreement that in this particular time frame which is a one minute time frame candle was only going to go up nobody was going to sell it right and that's what happened. These smaller bodies, you see these smaller bodies here, they show that uh, there's not as there's probably a lack of momentum, um, or or momentum is mom momentarily momentum is momentarily slowing down. I try to say that one ten times fast. So we got a uh, big momentum on these candles, and then it kind of slows down, and then immediately reverses. So these smaller bodies give you kind of, especially following these larger bodies, give you a sense of. Uh, potential change incoming right also if you see some bodies like this and then they work their way to these big large candles that could also lead to what's what's known as exhaustion which is kind of like every seller is in this candle the, the move is done right so there's a lot of information in the bodies now if you look at the wicks i like looking at the wicks where the trend kind of changes so i'm gonna draw a box around i'm just gonna draw a channel so that we're not it doesn't distract us too much I'm going to draw this channel in this area where, so this, these two red lines, you can see where there's just buying pressure at the bottom of this. So basically what this means is it opened up up here. It came all the way down to, to the bottom of this level, which is 42.51 and buyer stepped in, buyer stepped in and let it close a little bit higher. Again, on this candle, it came all the way down to that 42.51 and buyer stepped in and brought it up even higher. The next time that I reached this level, once, uh, once again, when it got here, buyer stepped in and, and uh, pushed it up a little bit. Now on this candle, it opened down here and buyer and, and sellers tried to sell it off, but buyers took control and brought it up way higher. And it, it started to, uh, it was a, a green candle, even though it still has lower highs and lower lows than this previous red candle, it's a green candle, which is a very important piece of information because now we might switch, you know, we're eating into this downside move. And if we continue, then we're going to hopefully make an upside move, which looks like exactly what happened. Uh, this current red candle is uh, kind of a change in trend, unless it does one of these. But I mean, it has a higher high. It has a higher, uh, uh, pretty much equal low. Um, but it opened way up here and closed way down here. So I wouldn't be surprised if we pulled back a little bit, right? And then uh, based on the sellers here on this level, you can tell that this is the level where people you know, as, as we've seen back in this area, this is where people tend to, to take a little bit of profits, even, you know, as you see here and as you see here. And that's all it means, you know, that means that sellers are just selling. When when the when the, the wick shows up on the top, that just means sellers are selling. When the wick shows up at the bottom, that means that buyers are buying, right? Sellers tried it, but buyers stepped in. Buyers tried it on the top side, but sellers stepped in. So that's all that that means. So there's a lot of information there. Now, the, uh, the last thing that I want to talk about is uh, time frames. We're currently on a one minute time frame uh, for the purpose of this example, so we're not stuck looking at one candle for 25 minutes. Uh, but let me switch it over to, so let's look at, let's look at, let's do it like this. Let me get rid of this 
move drawing. Uh, let's look at let's look at from here. From here to let's look at from there to there, right? The range of, of this red line, this red line right here, and this red line right here. This line was at 1020, and this line was is at uh, 1050, right? So this is 30 minutes worth of price action. So if you count these candles, there's 30 candlesticks between this line and this line, right? Now I'm gonna go to a five minute time frame. Each, which means each candlestick is going to be five minutes worth of price action, right? So let's go to the five minute. We still have that. We still have that range. Uh, where did it go? Let's see. Between between this this time frame right here, twenty two twenty, and twenty two fifty. But instead of it being thirty candles, it's only six candles, because the thirty candles were one minute candles each. Whereas now. Those 30 candles were condensed to a five minute time frame per candle, bringing you to six candles, which is this one, two, three, four, five, six candles, right? Now, uh, if we look at it on the 15 minute, I'm gonna let you guys take a guess. You know, we had 30 candles in a one minute and there's 30, 30 minutes worth of price action. So a 15 minute candlestick, it's very simple math, will bring you to two candles. Right, so we got this candle here at uh, 22, it, it says 22.15, but it's the same thing. And we have this candlestick here, which is, uh, you know, so these are these are 15 minute candles, each one. It takes 15 minutes for this price to develop, right? Now, if we look at the 30 minute time frame, and I wish I would have started this on an even an even number such as, you know, 2200 and not, uh, not 22.20, but it's fine. Uh, if we do that, then we're going to get, you know, each of these candlesticks are now... 30 minutes and they take 30 minutes to develop and if I go back to my one minute let's just do it like this so it's a little bit so that we can nail this point down I'm gonna I'm gonna draw this oval from uh, from here to where we are now to where price currently is now right so we have one two three four five six seven eight uh, eight 30 minute candles which is four hours of price right so now I'm going to go into my 15 minute and you can kind of see how many candles are there now, right? Between this four hours of price, right? And what is it? It's just, it's, it's four times four, 16 candles, right? Uh, if we go to the one minute, we got a lot, there's, there's a lot more, right? You have all this price action for the same time, for the same amount of time that passed on. The reason why I want to mention time frames and the reason why I mentioned time frames is because when you're trading, it's important for you to step in and out of time frames to kind of, you know, like right now we're on the one minute time frame and we're clearly in a downtrend. As you can see, uh, you know, price was up here and, and now it's kind of down here, right? And and so we're in this downtrend on the one minute, but if I were to pull back to the 15 minute and I zoom out and see the rest of the move, I can see that price started down here and is now up here, right? So, and then if I go back to, if I pull out of that and I go into the, the one hour, for example, I can see what the stock did for, for not only each candlestick is one hour, but I can see the history all the way back, you know, as far back as you can go, obviously, and, and on my chart, I have it all the way back to the, the 26th of, or 28th of January. So you can see, this is what you use to kind of determine where price has been in the past. Right now we're at a key level uh, with S&P futures because we have a double bottom here where we, we tested this level as support in the past, and again over here, and again over here, and then again on this one little candle, on this one hour candle, a little bit, right? But then we kind of flushed down, and now we're kind of testing it as resistance, and we're trying to break through it. And we came up above it here, and we kind of pushed down, and now we're trying to break through it. But on a one minute, on a one minute, you don't have all that information. All you see is kind of, I mean, you can kind of see it, but really all you see is this, right? This is really all you see. So that's the that's the significance of uh, of time frame analysis. You gotta typically go through all of the time frames to see what the full picture is. You use the larger time frames to determine where the trend is, and which will give you your bias. So if things are going in an uptrend, then you play to the upside. If things are strongly going to a downtrend, then you can play the downside. Right? You don't want to go cross trend. 
uh, or counter trend. And then you get your, your smaller time frame, such as your five minutes and your one minutes to see where you can find an ideal entry, right? If you're buying calls because you want the price to go up, then you would buy at support, such as this level here, where this level here, where uh, price acts as, you know, price seems to like to go up from this level. So you buy calls and it will go up from this level. Um, or if you're playing puts and you want the price to go down, then you buy at resistance, such as this red line it has acted as resistance in the past a couple times. So um, to get big downside moves, the candlesticks will allow you to see a little bit more than obviously the price, the uh, line graph does. We have an open, a high, a low, of, and a close of each candlestick, which gives it its color. If it closes higher than it opens, then we get a green candle. But if it closes lower than it opens, then we get a red candle. The bodies give you, uh, this is a good exhaustion candle, by the way. Um, the bodies kind of give you a, a, a hint of how things are moving and how much conviction there is. Um, this big red candle came pretty much at the end of a move. This big red candle came, uh, you know, it, it was like a kind of a G check for all the support here. Uh, and, uh, you know, and then when you see like wicks down here, multiple wicks in the same spot, that tells you that a lot of people are interested in keeping the price above this level. When you see multiple wicks on the top here, you see that a lot of people are interested in keeping the price below this level. And so the market is just a fight between buyers and sellers. And sometimes you get big, big moves like this where they kind of move big, you know, big swings. And sometimes you get kind of consolidated price such as this where the price is squeezed together very tight. Not really, uh, not much of a range, just kind of sitting in one spot until you get a big decision. I like to look for candlesticks like these to trade because when I see candlesticks like these, I know that a big move is coming either to the upside or the downside. You know, this one obviously went to the downside. There's a little bit of consolidation here, not much. There was a little range, but some consolidation and boom, big upside move. There's a lot of information in the candlesticks, which is why you should use candlesticks when you are trading, especially trading options. So that's it. That's all I got. I want to talk about uptrends and downtrends. A stock is in an uptrend when it's forming higher highs and higher lows, right? Higher highs and higher lows. So let's look at this section. Uh, so S&P futures were in an uptrend during this section because it was forming higher highs and higher lows. Now I'm gonna track it from the very beginning and then you can kind of follow along. So this is the low. This is a high. This is a low. This low is higher than this low, right? Let's continue. This is a high. This high is higher than this high. So we have a higher low and we have a higher high, right? Here's your higher high. Here's your high. Here's your higher high. Here's your low. Here's your higher low. Now we came down from here. We formed a higher low because this one's higher than this one. We formed a higher high because this high is higher than that one. Then we formed our we formed our first lower low, indicating a potential change in trend. Right, this the low of this candlestick came down below the low of this candlestick, so this low is lower than this low. But then we formed a higher high. So we still have our higher highs intact since the beginning. Higher highs are intact. This is our first lower low. And now we have a continuation of the trend where we have a higher low, right? And so it just pretty much did that. It kind of made a, a lower low here as well. Um, but it did that a bunch until we kind of over here, we started to change trend. Um, which I know because I was just, we were just looking at this chart a few seconds ago, right? But so so we have that, right? We have that. We have the uptrend of higher highs and higher lows, right? Uh, let's see. This is a one-hour time frame, so let's go to the let's go to the thirty minute. I want to show you something real quick. Now, the, the one point that I want to make with this is let's put a square around it. Uh, our first lower low within the uptrend and our second lower low within the uptrend, right? So again, follow me through this. First low, first high. First higher low, first higher high. Next higher low, next higher high, 
first lower low. So if we get lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, now we're in a downtrend. We formed our first lower low here. We formed another lower low here. This is a 30 minute time frame, excuse me, this is a one hour time frame. Let's do the four hour. And let's look for that same area. It looks like, where was it? Where was it? It's over here. So it, it's apparent, it's apparent on our four hour where those lower lows were. But you can draw this entirely differently. Let me use a different color. So I'm gonna ignore that one because this one's higher, right? Actually, this one's higher, so let's change it to that one. This one's higher, right? And then from there, first, the first low, the first low. From there, we have our, and I'm gonna go just to the next peak, right? The first, uh, this is our first higher high. First higher low. And then continue with the uh, with the trend, right? Continue with the trend. Um, so the reason why I pulled it out to a, a, a larger time frame is because on a smaller time frame, like the 30 minute, for example, I'm just gonna go to the 30 minute. Oh, it's not gonna show up. Go to one hour. On this one hour, the movements were a little choppier and jerkier, right? There was more kind of a little bit more range in the smaller time frame where you can see like there was some areas where we had to like make some pit stops uh whereas the blue line looks like it's much smoother movement right um you know just be aware that if you do a daily you do a daily we got the high of the low of day high of day low of day high like it's like you know this this is like a just straight up uptrend these three green candles on a daily right these three days are like a straight up uptrend but those are the same those candles those three candles on a daily are however many candles here on the one hour right and it's all this kind of there's more information there's some sideways movement there's you know it's it's it was it attempted to test a downtrend and if you come into like a, a one a, a, a one minute you know if you come into a one minute time frame then you had a downtrend on these three hours you had a downtrend on these seven hours right you had a downtrend on these four hours. Every every time it made a low, it was it was starting to form a downtrend. So uh, the uptrends and downtrends uh, are always happening depending on what time frame you're on. And really, you just have to know what time frame you're in, what time frame you're trading, in order to know what the move you're looking for. So if you're doing, if you're scalping and you're on the one minute, right? If you're on the one minute or the five minute, you shouldn't be anything, on anything higher than a five minute if you're scalping. Then right now I'm in an uptrend. And if I get up, if I get, let me just draw it here real quick. All right, we got our, I don't know where the high of this candle is. I don't know where it is. We got our high. We got our low. We got our high. We got our low. Now we got a high and we're hopefully gonna form a low that it doesn't have to be higher than this high it just has to be higher than this low. And we can expect that it's gonna pull back because it's done that a bunch. It pulled back a little bit here, pulled back a little bit here. I expect it to pull back at some point a little bit, a little bit, and just make a higher a higher low than this previous low to maintain the uptrend. You know, if I were to look at this in the, the one day, this is a very clear downtrend. We have our highs up here. We have a low, a, high, a, a lower high, a lower low, a lower high, a lower low, right? So if I'm scalping and I'm taking this move, then I can buy calls and be in and out of the calls as quickly as possible because I'm scalping, you know, I stay in my one minute, my five minute, maybe 15 minutes to confirm the move, but that's about it. If I'm swinging, then maybe I don't wanna buy calls because if I look at the daily, you know, a swing trade is usually typically longer than one day. Uh, the, the market doesn't look like it's ready to go up yet, right? So, I mean, at the time of this recording, obviously, at the time of this candlestick, it doesn't look like it's fully ready to go up. Um, or rather, it doesn't show that it's in an uptrend, right? As of now, um, we have this low, and this we have this low down here on the bottom. Actually, I think that's my channel. Yeah, that's my channel. Let me get rid of it. Uh, we have this low here, 
So we still have to form a higher high and a higher low before we can, and we, we I mean, we have the higher low kind of, but you know, we're looking for these, these bigger moves, these larger moves. Um, and, and so that's why time frames are important to, to kind of see what, where your trend is in relation to your trade in relation to your time frame. So that's it. That's all I got. And to finish the recap and to finish the video, uh, let's see. One last candlestick recap. This this one opened up here at 42.71, and it's currently trading at uh, 42.70.75. Um, and since it's currently below its open, it's a red candlestick. And as you can see, some buyers brought it up for a moment until sellers brought it back down. Uh, this is a red candlestick, and sellers are in control right now because there's there's a little bit of buyers, but as you can see, but the sellers are majorly in control. If this, if the buyers manage to bring this price up above the open, then this candlestick will turn green, right? As long as this, the price remains below the open, then the candlestick will stay red. So let's watch it. They almost bought, buyers almost took control and brought it up all the way up. Now all this buying pressure is very very bullish, but there's no volume here, so I can't tell you whether you know there's a lot of volume in that trade, how much conviction there is. Volume is a, a very, very important tool when it comes to analyzing candlesticks as well. So that's it, guys. Thank you for stopping by. If you're looking for an options trading community, then you can visit goldrushgang.net. Follow us on all social media at Gold Rush Academy. Our server is free, uh, so you can go to goldrushgang.net. Click on uh, the very first link you'll see is a free trial, um, and you'll have access to homework for life for free. Yeah, so you see how it's red, and then it flipped to green for a moment, but now it's red. Let's see. I am addicted to this stuff, man. I, I can just watch candlesticks all day. Um, and there's the next one open low and came up and sh showed green. And it looks like sellers are in control. We got a bunch of, uh, bunch of red candles. Buyers can't take over this area here. They can't bring the price above this area like they did here. Um, you know, they're trying. They're trying. You know, and if it stays green and it goes higher, then it'll remain green. But uh, if sellers keep the control, then it switches to red. And we'll, we'll see kind of where it goes. All right, guys. That's it. Thank you so much.